Hello, this is Alfredia Flowers, and we're on day nine of The Basics in 21 Days by Micah and Joy Williams. And I'm so excited to be with you. I just want to pray quickly. Father, I just thank you for those that are looking at this and learning about just getting some spiritual milk for their, for their journey with you. And we're on day nine. And so I pray that my Holy Spirit, it will be just what they need today. And the basics today, lend a hand, day nine. Wow. Day nine. Lend a hand. Hmm. Lend a hand. What could that be about? Well, one of the, the biblical teachings considered to be elementary is the laying on of hands. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Since this is, is so foundational, I want to explore the power of laying on hands in this lesson. And not everything in the Bible is always explained. And for example, when it says in Hebrews 9 and 22, there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. That verse does not explain it, but you can get an understanding through other verses. So that, so that is true with the laying on of hands that we see in Hebrews chapter 6. When the Bible tells of God's hand being upon someone, it means his power through his spirit is going upon someone and that's second kings chapter 3 verse 15 and again in the new testament in acts chapter 28 verse 8 it talks about the power coming through hands being laid on people and then so when we see about the laying on of hands there are three basic outcomes one impartation Two, receiving the Holy Spirit. And three, physical healing. For each of them, there are two outcomes. For impartation, we look at Numbers chapter 11, verse 18. And it talks about when God told Moses that he was going, that he was going to do that with him, going to impart to him as he laid hands. There was two parts of impartation. One was giving a spiritual gift to someone. So we have Timoth, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 14. The other was releasing a blessing to someone. That's recognized as being called to a specific ministry. Acts chapter 13 verses 1 through 3. Impartation through the laying of hands can release the gifts of the spirit or enhance sp spiritual activity in someone's ministry, but it must not be done lightly, according to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. This is because we're expected to use what God has entrusted to us, Matthew chapter 25, verse 19. So do not receive the laying on of hands for impartation without first resolving to use what is given to you. Oh, I guess that's part of that lending a hand. One of the ways to receive the Holy Spirit, which is the second thing we have impartation. Now the second is the, the receiving the Holy Spirit. One of the ways to receive the Holy Spirit is with the laying on of hands. And that's found in Acts chapter eight, verse 17 and Acts chapter 19, verse six are examples of the Holy Spirit being imparted through the laying on of hands. And these are not the only, it's not the only way to receive the Holy Spirit. Then we look at first, excuse me, John chapter 21, verse 25. Because it's not the only thing that God does, but the laying on of hands to receive the Holy Spirit. And, and the people felt, sometimes felt his presence. And he goes on to talk about in Titus chapter one, verse two, the hope of eternal life. When God, who cannot lie, promised long ago, feeling the presence of the spirit is a good reason to receive the laying on of hands many times because in his presence is 
is great joy. Psalms 16th chapter, verse 11. You, God, will make known to me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forever. So to be filled with the Holy Spirit over and over in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, imagine yourself as a cup overflowing with God and touching others with his love, Psalms 23, verse 5. Finally, the third we have outcome of, of the laying on the hands is physical healing. So we have impartation, the receiving the Holy Spirit, and now we have physical healing. Healing is a covenant, is in the covenant that we have in Christ, according to Isaiah 53. Surely our griefs or sickness he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves he carried, yet. We ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was pierced or wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging, we are healed. The book of Matthew gives insight to what Isaiah was saying when he, in, in Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. And then he goes on to talk about more about the healing through the laying on of hands in Luke chapter 13, verses 11 through 16, and 1 John 6, th chapter 3, verse 8. Again, that was 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. And again, I love to look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and 24, because in this verse, he talks about by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Peter's looking back to Calvary, whereas Isaiah is looking forward to Calvary and says, by the stripes, we are healed. So God has ordained even in his suffering for us to be healed because sickness is part of the curse. Physical healing has two expressions. These two are called healing and miracles. The Bible speaks about the gifts work of miracles in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. A miracle is an instant physical healing, while a healing is progressive. Jesus some prayed for someone twice, and some others were healed as they went, according to Mark chapter 8, verse 25, and Luke chapter 17, verse 14. So... As you lay hands on people, you will see miracles and healing. Both are good. And I have experienced both in my own life. I experienced a miracle, a miraculous healing of fibroid tumors that I was in great pain. And I was at a Benny Hinn con uh, a crusade and he did his hand like this and the anointing. So God himself touched me as he motioned his hands. The anointing touched me. The pain went away. I went back to the doctor. I had no more fibroid tumors. And I experienced healing through the laying on of hands. I had uh, been in, had an injury to my knee and I was in pain for six months, nonstop. I had laying on of hands at Miracle Monday at in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. And the healing, the pain went away. I still had sometimes um, when the bones were still out of place. So I ended up going to a chiropractor to get the bones Put back in place but the pain left immediately so that was a progressive healing so i've experienced both through the laying on of hands miracles and progressive healing and finally the williams talk about john wimber who developed a simple five-step prayer model and randy clark who uses that in his healing school manual and i attend um, Randy Hart Clark's one of Randy Clark's schools that he started, and we do use that five prayer step, uh, five step prayer model. And the five steps I'm just going to highlight: one, the interview. You ask the person how they are and what's wrong, and then two, it says diagnose, but we're not doctors, so what we do is we just try to find out when the problem began and what was going on in their life when when that happened, and uh, ask can we pray for them. This, and then once they, we determine that, 
then we select the type prayer. Are we going to speak to directly to the condition or are we going to ask God to Father God to heal them in Jesus name? Either way, if we speak directly to the condition, we're doing that in Jesus name. And so then finally with that, after that you've done the prayer, then selected the prayer, then the fourth step is actually to administer the prayer that you have selected and then check back with the person to see if if they've had a change, if they if they experience the any change in the, if their symptoms, if they had pain, uh, if it has a pain stopped, whatever they can determine, and ask or ask them to do something that they could not do, and then if they if they still are not if it's only a partial healing or then we can pray again if they have not seen a change, pray again. Jesus prayed twice, so surely it's okay if we pray again, and. Then when we feel like the prayer has ended, we've, we've uh, prayed in the name of Jesus. And so then we give five, the step five is to give post-prayer suggestions. And so we want to give them to, uh, to encourage them. So we will continue to get, have them to praise God and thank God for the healing that they have received. And if, if it's not a full healing, to just continue to celebrate as they see the manifestation of God healing, trusting that God wants to heal them. And so that's basically what we have in the five-step prayer model. You can get the book and get all of the details because I'm only giving highlights. So we look finally, the Williams have us reach John chapter nine. So we are on the ninth day, we're reading the ninth chapter of John. And then still yourself and place yourself in the verse, in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 11. Just imagine yourself there and come to Jesus and ask him one of two questions. How can I grow in love and step out to pray for people? Two, the second one, or ask, how important is praying for other people? So that's Linda Hand in praying for other people. We're... and. When we pray for other people and we lay on hands, when I do it, I imagine that it's the hand of God because it is reaching out in the name of Jesus, that he is healing through me, that his anointing is flowing through me by Holy Spirit, that, that he is the healer and he's doing it. So that's the highlight for day nine. And I just want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for healing to go forth in Jesus name if those that need healing I pray that you even as you you almighty God laid hands on Moses I pray that your anointing would go and minister healing to those that need healing today I pray that your your anointing for the baptism of the Holy Spirit would go forth to those who are seeking that in the name of Jesus and I thank you for impartations that people are receiving, impartations for the ministry that you have ordained for them. Father, I just thank you that you are the healer, that you are the deliverer. You're the soon coming King, Lord Jesus. We say you're our Lord, you're our savior, and we want to our hands to be used for you, for your kingdom. We want to lend a hand and it, we, we just pray for faith and, and strength and courage, the boldness to go out and pray for others to be healed, delivered, set free in Jesus' name. I love you and God loves you more. Be blessed.